Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. From the beach, it had looked like a good idea. But now, she wasn't so certain. From the beach, the rafts had appeared calm and she'd watched the hotel guests sunning themselves on the man-made islands. I'm going to swim out to them, she told her husband. She knew he wouldn't follow her. He was a weak swimmer. The rock was a lot further than she expected, and the water was a lot deeper. She could feel herself growing anxious. The thought of things swimming below her really unnerved her. She'd come this far, she had to keep on going. What seemed like forever took till she reached the last raft. And all she could think of was getting out of the water. But it was a lot harder than she thought. Heaving herself out of the water on an unbalanced surface was exhausting. Eventually, she was on the top. She sat there shivering, not only from the cold. She realized she was too scared to go back into the water. They had arrived at the Caribbean island the night before. Her husband had been ill on the plane. She had watched him return from the toilet having vomited and order another drink. It's to calm her stomach, he said. She was torn between feeling sympathy because he was ill and feeling annoyed because he was drinking. She spent most of the long trip reading a book. When they got to her expensive hotel, he suggested she order room service and went to bed. She spent a long time reading the menu. The prices were extortionate. She decided her hunger wasn't that important. She wouldn't starve to death. She flipped through a magazine, read the last chapter of a book, and with only her silent tears to keep her company, eventually fell asleep. A man-made island was made from wood and anchored with chains to keep it in place. She looked at the beach. The people were a lot smaller than she expected. She waved in case her husband was watching her. But she couldn't spot him. He'd probably gone for a walk or something. She peered nervously to see if anything was swimming in the clear water around her. And then she lay down, feeling like a beached whale, and listened to the sounds below. The water echoed through wood, but only disrupted by the clunk of the chain as the deck was pulled back in place. She thought it would be so much more relaxing if the chain weren't there, then the raft would just rock with the waves. She imagined herself drifting off into the ocean, bobbing gently. As she lay there, she found herself fiddling with her replacement engagement ring. The loneliness of marriage. She had lost her engagement ring when she was pregnant with their last child. He'd used the insurance money to pay off the credit cards, and she hadn't really expected it to be replaced. The night before their wedding anniversary, she told him quietly, I don't think I want to be married to you anymore. 
he cried and sobbed. The next night they went out for dinner. The meal for two was awkward. They sat in uncomfortable silence. Neither of them knew what to say to each other. Eventually, they started talking about the children. It was the only thing they seemed to have in common. He presented her with an engagement ring that night, his eyes welling up. She had taken it because she hadn't wanted him to burst out crying in the restaurant. And still did she realise the implications of her gesture. He assumed that she hadn't meant what she'd said the night before. She kept silent. It was easier. She was starting to warm up now, and she drifted between being asleep and awake, occasionally being roused by the voices of swimmers coming by. She would glance up uninvitingly. This was her territory, her stake in the ocean. They always swam on. And she lay there, bobbing on a raft, going with the flow of the water, the clunk of the chain, the smack of the wave, and the warmth of the sun on his skin. After a long time, she sat up. How long had she been there? She had no idea. She knew she couldn't stay there forever, suspended on the sea. With a deep sigh, the wife slipped into the water and headed back to the beach 